you know, all of the stuff with gold and diamonds, and all, like you see people piling into Bitcoin and buying Pokemon, like anything they can get their hands on right now. Do you, is there a sense that people are kind of like, everything's going up in value and we're worried about the dollar and I don't know what do you get any of that sense at all or is that is that sort of like a side issue well I don't think it's a side issue I think there's a lot of confusion around what things are really worth and you'll see tonight when we go into the diamond district to try to understand what a diamond's worth it's still pretty vague to a lot of people and I think understanding how these economies and these industries move uh, the diamond industry has been terribly hurt in 2020, as you would imagine, right? People aren't spending money on things like that. They're spending money on things like campers. Uh, and so we're dealing in a different time right now. And we wanted to go out and show people how we can pull back the curtain on different industries, and whether it's the diamond business or uh, we go down to Miami and South Florida and we'll visit a lot of different cities. And I think people enjoy understanding what happens behind the curtain. Yeah. Well, one more question in this vein while I'm thinking about it. You're kind of a high net worth individual. Have you ever thought about buying or do you own Bitcoin, Marcus? I mean, is that something that, that you know, that, do you have like a financial advisor who says to you, you know, oh, you got to think about getting in or, or again, do you just kind of keep an eye on it like everybody else? I am still fascinated by this whole idea behind Bitcoin, and I don't ever like to question people's thought process behind it, but I'm into good old fashioned cash. And so in my financial advisor, which I don't have one, by the way, but if my financial advisor told me to get into this, I would say, well, <laughs> is it better than cash? Is it going to give me a higher yield? And it looks like in certain sectors, the answer is yes, but I'm, I'm still scared of it. Now, Mark Cuban and I were trading some tweets yesterday about it, uh, and I tried to just stay away from it. It's too complicated for me. Well, I take your point that the prophet doesn't need a financial advisor. You you are the financial advisor. What do you think about um, what we've just passed again? I mean, we've talked a lot about the need for areas like restaurants of direct aid, but the restaurant uh, specific aid bill was not in this COVID package. The direct checks were. We were just debating whether that's the right way uh, to support the economy or if it should be something that's more targeted. Um, PPP at least kind of achieves some of that. Um, but is this all going to help and, and help? How much do you think? You know, I love having this debate with people because I'm a capitalist at heart. And what we do at CNBC, as you know, Kelly, is we promote capitalism. And this idea that this government money is a form of socialism is kind of nonsense to me. And part of the reason that it is, is that in a normal time, if people weren't making and their business wasn't surviving, I get it. Let them die. But in this particular case, where they've been inflicted with pain that they have no control of, we got to solve the problem for them. And you look at the waterfall of businesses that have been affected, and clearly restaurants are right there at the top of the chart. And we, you know, we started a fund a little while ago, put five hundred thousand dollars in to go directly towards businesses, and then we put another five hundred thousand in, and we can keep putting money in. But if the government, local, state, and federal don't start acting like this is a problem. We're going to have a bigger problem. And that's the commercial real estate market and the trade payables that are about to get cooked. And that collateral damage will be insurmountable on the real estate side. How do we best avoid that then? You know, as somebody who's on the front lines of business across multiple yeah. different industries, you meet with so many different entrepreneurs who are hit in so many different ways we can't even imagine by what's going on with the economy this year. What's the best way to do targeted true relief and avoid that outcome? Look, I, I'm never a fan of raising the national debt, but I also am a fan of trying to figure out how to stop the bleeding right now. And if we have to come up with an alternative method in years forward to claw some of that money back, that's fine. But let's remind everybody that the money that's going to go out into the marketplace from the federal bill is going to go into the economy. It's going to go into people's bank accounts. And it's going to actually get spread through commerce, create profits, create jobs, do a bunch of other things. I think if we don't do something quicker and maybe even deeper, particularly with restaurants and salons and gyms and, and towns and cities, for example, we're going to have a problem that I think we have never really thought about. And if you go back to 2008 and 2009, when the bubble happened on the commercial real estate side and then the banking side and the loan side, this thing could be much more catastrophic because unemployment will come with it with a much bigger wave. And so my advice to everybody right now is you pile in as much money as you possibly can into these local main streets, into these local economies to get the air back in the balloon. And then if those folks can't figure out how to survive after that, then, you know, we, we, we can't help everybody all the time. 
Right. Interesting. Interesting. It's kind of getting, you know, like you said, kind of getting as much in there right now. I know you're busy guy, Marcus, helping out with the Nashville uh, relief effort and so much more. We appreciate you taking the time today. Looking forward to the new show. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Thanks, Kelly. Happy New Year. Mar you too. Marcus Lemonis is the prophet and his new series, Street of Dreams, premieres tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time and Pacific. And that's right here on CNBC. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.